What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to build a GraphQL server in Golang. We are going to create a GraphQL schema and using that schema as the input, we are going to use a library that will allow us to generate the GraphQL server code. And if you don't know what GraphQL is, you can watch the video I published about the GraphQL fundamentals a few days ago. Remember to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. Okay, so we're going to use the SQL gen library to generate our GraphQL server code in Golang. And these are the main characteristics of this library. It's a schema first library. So first we need to define our API schema using GraphQL schema definition language. It's type safe. And this library will allow us to generate the skeleton of a GraphQL server using the API schema as the input. And this is the GitHub repository of the project. Okay, now let's move on to the terminal and let's create a new project. I'm going to create a new folder here. I'm going to call it GraphQL server. And now I'm going to open Visual Studio Code. And here I'm going to open a new terminal and I'm going to initialize the project. Go mod in it, gitlab.com slash pragmatic reviews slash GraphQL dash server. And now I need to download the GQL gen library. So I need to run go get github.com slash 99 designs slash gql gen. Okay, and now in order to create the project skeleton, I need to run go run. I'm going to grab this from here. And here I need to add in it to generate the project skeleton. So as we can see here, this tool is going to generate this project structure, including this graph folder here. And it's going to also create this server file. And this file is going to include this GraphQL playground that is basically a GraphQL IDE that we're going to access to test our GraphQL API. And also this YAML file that includes the source location of the schema files here and will be the input for the code generator. The target location where the generated code is going to be located here. This is the code generated by default. And this code here, here, as we can see, we have all these structures that represent the schema. And this is the default schema created by this tool when we initialize the project. So we have a to-do type, a user type, this query, this input, and this mutation. And if you go to the generated code, here we have the to-do type or the to-do struct, the user struct, the query, and the mutation. And here is the rest of the code for the GraphQL server. And if we go back to the YAML file, here is where the models are going to be generated, as we can see here. Here we have the input, we have the to-do type, and here we have the user type. If we go back to the YAML file, here we have where the code for the resolvers is going to be generated. Here we have to add our own implementation, actually here. Here, we need to add our own implementation. So here we can use an array, we can call an external API, or we can use a database, for example. Okay, and now we're going to replace this default schema. So let's do that. I'm going to remove everything from here. Here we are going to define a video API. So first let's create the type video. And this video is going to include the identifier. This exclamation mark makes this field required. So it's gonna have an ID, it's gonna have a title. This is going to be a string. It's gonna have a URL. That's going to be a string as well and required. And it's going to have an author. And we're going to define a user type here. Type user. This user is going to have an ID. That is going to be required. And a name 
just to keep it really simple. It's going to be string and it's going to be required as well. Now let's define a query. So it's going to be type query. And here we're going to define videos as the name of the query. And it's going to include a list of videos. We're going to make this required. Okay, and in order to create a new video, we're going to need a mutation. So we're going to define type mutation. This mutation is going to be create video. And we're going to receive as the input, we're going to receive another struct. We need to create another structure. There's going to be input like this. And it's going to be new video. And this is going to include the title. That's going to be a string. This title is going to be required. Then we're going to have a URL. That is going to be a string. And the identifier of the user. So let's call it user ID. That is going to be a string as well. OK, and here is going to be a new video. This is required, and this is going to return the video. That's pretty much the schema. It's going to be really simple. Before running the generator, we need to make sure that we include this line within this file here. And we need to also remove this file. We don't have to, but it's recommended to remove this file. And now we need to go to the graph folder. And here we need to run go generate. If we go to the models, we're going to see that we have our input. This is the input. This is the user type. And this is the video type. We have all the struct tags here. And if we go here to the generated file, we're going to see that we have all the structs here. We have the video struct, the user struct, the query, and the mutation. And we have the rest of the code of the GraphQL server. And if we go here to the schema resolvers, we're going to need to implement these two functions. One to create a video, and these to return a list of videos. This is actually the mutation, and this one is the query. OK, first, let's work on the mutation. So we're going to receive a video as the input using this struct here. And here we're going to receive this mutation resolver. And the definition of this mutation resolver is going to be here. And this is going to be videos. And here we need to define a slice of model model that video. OK, let's go back. And here we're going to create a video using the input that we receive here. And this is going to be the identifier first. For the identifier, we're going to use a random value. So we can use this function to generate a string with this format. And here we can use run that int to generate the identifier. Actually, the random identifier like this. Then we want to have the title of the video. And for that, we're going to use input that title. We're going to have the URL of the video input that URL. And finally, we want to have the author of the video. So this is going to be model that user. And here we need to pass the ID. Sorry, ID. This is going to be input input that user ID. And then we want to have the name of the user. And we're going to use this value and we're going to concatenate the user ID. I'm going to grab this from here.
Okay, I'm going to store this new video within the array of videos, videos that I created actually here. Let's go back. So here I need to append this new video to the slice of videos like this. And here I need to return the video. And nil as the error. And I forgot here to add this reference here. Yeah. Let's move on to the query now. And this is going to be simple. This is going to return r.videos. That is basically the slice that we are going to use. And nil because we don't have any errors here. We are just returning the existing slice. And that's pretty much it. We are keeping it really, really simple here. We are just creating a new video here using this input. We are storing that video within this array. And here, this query resolver is just returning this slice of videos. Not, sorry, it's not an array, it's a slice. Now we can run the server and we can try our GraphQL API. Go run server.go 8080. Here we have the playground and here we can run different queries or mutations. Here I have a mutation already created, a create video mutation, where we're going to pass the title of the video, the URL of the video and the user ID. And we expect as a result, the ID of the author, the title of the video and the URL of the video. So if we run this, here we get the result. So we're gonna have one element within the local array of the server. Let's create another one. Let's say video two, user two. And I forgot to mention that this is going to also create a new author and the name of the author is gonna be author one in this case. And for this new author with ID two, is going to create a user with ID two and the name of the user is gonna be user two. So I'm going to run this. And now we can run a query. Here we can get the history of queries. So we can reuse any of these queries. For example, this one, I'm going to click here on use. So I can use this, this query here. I'm going to run this query. Here we are getting the list of videos, including the title of the video, the URL of the video, and the name of the author. Here we can also include the identifier, and here we can also include the identifier of the video as well. If I run this, here we get the identifier. That is a random value, the title, the URL, and the information about the author. And the same here for this second video. And here I can also remove this, remove this, and remove the identifier. And here, as we can see, we get the list of videos, including the title and the name of the author. Okay, guys, that's pretty much all I have for today. Thank you for watching, and I see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.